So now that pretty much everyone important already has released his review of the Moto G5 Plus, it is finally time for mine. From what I've seen, it got a lot of praise and I think most people would agree that it is the best budget phone all around. And I'm not gonna disagree, especially if you live in the US where this phone is available for around $220 in the 3GB version, I would say you could just stop watching this video because all they said is true. But if you live somewhere else, like for example Europe, where this phone is still close to like 300 euros, the competition in my opinion is way stronger and then the few minor imperfections and weaknesses of this phone could actually have an impact on your decision if you want to buy it or not. And I definitely don't want to bash this phone because overall, as I said, it is great especially in the US, but I just want to point out a few things I think some people didn't mention yet and I just want to share my opinion on what I think about it. So into the first thing here, design and build quality. Let's get the negative start out of the way. First of all, the plastic rim. It makes the device feel a little bit cheaper than it actually is, and it is also a little bit slippery because also the back, which is metal, doesn't feel all the premium iron, it's also a little bit slippery. The device though itself feels very sturdy and solid, so it doesn't creak and is built quite nicely, but also not quite compact. Because if we compare it here with the Honor 8, which is not that far off in terms of price, at least here in Europe, you can see that one is noticeably narrower shorter and also thinner even though it has the same battery size so they could have made this device a little bit more compact what you can also see here maybe on the camera is that the digitizer of this phone is actually visible and i've noticed this in normal use i just wanted to, to point out it's not a huge thing after all at all but something that just has to be pointed out same as for the camera that sticks out a little bit on the top we have the sd card and sim card tray nothing on the left side on the bottom unfortunately still micro usb with the microphone and the headphone jack on the right side. The buttons, absolutely great placed, easy and convenient to reach. They could have a little bit more tactile feedback and also click because they feel a little bit mushy. There is also no notification LED because Moto likes to use the Moto display, something that I know a lot of people don't think so extremely interesting, but it's there. The fingerprint reader though I have to say super reliable and mostly fast even though the whole turn on animation and so on feels a little bit slower because I think they made the animation to turn on and turn off the screen a little bit longer than necessary but it is a great one especially with its extra functionality and I have to praise them for that because to the left it for example opens the recent apps and to the right it's the back button and this is something that I would definitely like to see on way more phones but now I would say the kind of bashing is pretty much mostly done because the next thing is just something that I'm not super impressed by but it's still very solid because the display color mode only available would be standard and vibrant and I would wish for a little bit more vibrancy actually to be honest but if we check the set, the qualities here in terms of brightness minimum brightness that is something that someone wanted to know is 70 lux and the maximum would be 480 everything above 450 is absolutely fine in my opinion so all is good here when it comes to viewing angles those are absolutely stable no complaints here white though noticeably too cold and i think even though the black is quite solid the colors are a little bit pale just a little uh, just a smidgen undersaturated and i've just noticed this because i have like 10 phones here for a big comparison and there i just noticed that this phone was the only one standing out being too cold and a little bit weaker in terms of saturation but it is a fully pleasing display still for most people even though it just didn't quite get me what i wanted seeing so many better ones out there now the speaker The speaker I would say is quite okay because it is mostly loud enough. It, I would wish for it to be a little bit louder after all. In terms of balance, it is not super rich, but it's also not thin, so quite okay here as well. Overall, it's okay, especially since it is front firing. In terms of the headphone jack, I would say that one is slightly above average and that's why it gets an okay for me. Still better than like 90% out or there on the market, especially for earphones, no problems at all. A little bit more demanding headphones could get a little bit trouble. But otherwise, let's get into the performance. And here, the phone definitely knows to shine because the Snapdragon 625 definitely doesn't disappoint, especially since it's very well optimized. But as all the other Snapdragon 625 phones, I will say it's not super snappy. It is very reliable, it is very consistent, but just not super extremely fast. But is it something that matters in normal use? No, in my opinion, absolutely not. Because here is what matters. As you can see here, super smooth, pretty much lag free at all times. This is what is important for most people. And this is what I would say is absolutely even enough for me, even though I would usually like to prefer flagships. And this is noticeably still not as super lightweight smooth, 
it performs great. It's a very capable phone. All daily tasks get handled very well. It never really bogs down or so. The three gigabytes of RAM still allow for very fast multitasking and so on. So top here in all regards. No complaints. Same as for the gaming, because I have to say the Snapdragon 625 once again knows to shine with, I would say, moderate to slightly above that frame rates. It is very great for every game even more demanding ones you can play those without any problems there are no frame drops no skip frames or so so gaming experience is on a really high level and especially since also the thermals are great it doesn't overheat it doesn't really get warm at all so nothing but praise here especially in this mid-range segment this is super nice to see now when it comes to the battery a full charge takes about one hour and fifty not super fast, but totally fine. Eight percent for an hour of YouTube is also very good. One of the better values, and the same goes for the battery estimates that I have. Even though they look a little bit mixed, but they actually prove me what I've seen on the Nubia Z11 Mini S because I get around, I would say, ten hours plus on Wi-Fi only, where I only get like five and a half to six hours on mobile data. So the difference is quite big. But even those six hours on mobile data are still very impressive, and that's why it overall gets definitely easily a fantastic battery life and the mixed use would be somewhere in between so all is good here especially since especially on wi-fi only the standby range is very very good now let's talk about software but not all that much because there is not too much to say because you can see if you swipe up you see all your apps and of course the launcher shows you all these as well if we open the draw here of course you will see the customizable quick settings what i didn't found though or find was on option to show me the battery percentage because in the system tuner this option for some reason was not available and in the settings there is just not much to say the only things that i would like to talk about is that we have motor display that shows you notifications when that comes with the screen off instead of a notification led you have for example the gestures here to turn on the flashlight and also the camera but otherwise, I would say that's pretty much it. It's a very no-frill no frill software, but therefore very solid, very reliable, no bloat, and the updates should get quite in time. This is already running, by the way, with Nougat, so all is good here. I can't complain, but I just can't be super impressed by this anymore these days. Now, let's talk about the camera. And here, especially when it comes to selfies, it does a quite, actually, really good job because, as you can see, mostly very sharp. Colors seem absolutely nicely balanced. Not always perfect in terms of white balance, but this is absolutely okay. Of course, the exposure seems fine. So definitely a quite good selfie cam. In terms of low light capabilities, here without the flash, you can see still quite good. It maintains a mostly quite blurry free and also kind of clean image. So it's not all that grainy. So absolutely a nice job. Not great. Of course, the shutter also gets a little bit slower, but it's outside where this camera shows its performance and its quite impressive behavior. Especially as you can see, it gets some pictures super nice and sharp, super detailed. Shutter times are fast. If the focus works quite good, you get great results with a lot of details. Everything is balanced quite nicely. Nothing gets really overexposed and so on. So it can produce some really great shots. The only reason why I won't give it a great in overall as for the camera would be the autofocus because that one is not all that reliable. It was a little bit flaky, especially in not perfect lighting conditions. And I will show you some of the samples in a few seconds here. And this is the only reason why I would say this is not great because otherwise you can see the high dynamic range is top notch. And here you can see those. It just sometimes doesn't get that it should focus. And here once again. But in terms of video, 4K is available and it's actually quite smooth, but as you can see here already in the clouds, a little bit of a higher bitrate would have been nice, but usually if you don't move it too much, you will see a very detailed picture. Colors here seem also quite fine. The autofocus seems a little bit better, as you can see here also, quite nice, impressive. Yeah, nothing to really say here about. 1080p 60 is available here as well and with fast movement, even though then we can see a lot more actual yeah artifacts as you can see that so i would say maybe just don't move it too fast or maybe stick with 4k but otherwise an absolutely nice camera and that's pretty much all i have to say about that one and that's why i would say i turned the wrong way because the camera is here let's get to the pros and cons starting off here will be to call out the solid and sturdy build quality it's maybe not super compact or so but very sturdy Good and reliable fingerprint reader. I really like the home button functionality, also replacing the software buttons. The display, in my opinion, is still good. 
almost very good, but the calibration was just not quite good enough for that. We have a quite good speaker, an okay headphone jack. The performance is absolutely easily very good. The fantastic battery life is also one thing like the highlight here of this phone. We get a clean and solid software, really good selfie camera, quite good low light cam, almost great photo cam as I said and quite good video cam. And the value therefore, especially in the US, is absolutely top notch. Now, here are the parts that I just have to point out at not being just that great. It is, as I said, not quite compact for a 5.2 inch, even in this price range. The plastic rim gives it a slightly cheap feel. It is also a little bit on the slippery side. The fingerprint reader vibration was slightly annoying and I didn't see an option to turn it off. The display calibration, as I said, a little bit disappointing because otherwise it would have had much higher potential to get a better rating from me. The visible digit, as I said, also one thing to point out would be that YouTube in full screen for some reason dims, which it does not if you have it in portrait mode. That could get fixed, but it's just a weird issue that I've seen. We also have no compact compass. This is just something that I want to point out because a few people have asked me because of that and they see this to be an actual big problem. Then also slightly boring software for some, even though that's not something important and at times flaky autofocus. So let's wrap this up to cover what I think of it. Let's quickly just make one thing sure. All the negatives aren't really super important because for the price, especially like I said, in the US, you get a great overall package. But as you can also see, maybe some of the really good qualities are just good or nice or almost great or almost very good. So I just want to point out that it is a very balanced phone. It doesn't really have any major weaknesses, but there are just some things that just don't make it feel as premium as some other phones, like for example, some Huawei phones and also like for example, the Nubia that I've reviewed that feel noticeably more premium, maybe more compact, have the just more pleasant display and so on. And these are things that for a few people actually are more important. Because if you are someone who wants just a super solid phone that gets the job done with a great battery life and a super camera, this is the one to go for, especially for around 220. But if you're someone who maybe can live with a little bit, maybe less battery life or some other things, but therefore gets the way nicer display, the more overall premium feel, there are phones available. And these are ones that I want to cover in my six phones comparison with phones at around $300 because they offer things that this one just doesn't offer. But like I said, this one is super nicely balanced. And like I said, in the US, it's pretty much unbeatable. There, the competition is just not that strong and the phone is noticeably cheaper. But anywhere else, the competition is there. It is worth mentioning. And that's why I think it's also just worth mentioning that it's not the perfect phone as I've seen a few people calling it out. Yes, super solid, super reliable without any flaws, but it just doesn't wow me in quite a few categories. And this is where I want to leave it. Of course, you can let me know your opinion down there in the comments below. Leave a like and subscription. And I just shared my opinion. What you do with that is your. <laughs> decision. Okay, until next time, bye.